Hello, this is Telecom TV. We're in London at the Wireless Global Congress in London, very close to Heathrow, as a matter of fact. And I'm talking with Mansour Hanif, who is the CTO of Ofcom. Mansour, great to see you again. We've met a lot over the past few years. Great to see you too. I'd like to begin by asking you this question. Knowing your background and where you've come from in telecoms, when you went to Ofcom, were you a poacher turned gamekeeper, a gamekeeper turned poacher, or what? I would feel more like the prey, perhaps the pheasant. <laughs> or the, or the wild boar. <laughs> <laughs> was it as bad as that? <laughs> no, I'm joking. But, uh, but yeah, it is a different uh, perspective. Absolutely. And uh, for somebody who's very curious as I am, yeah. and uh, I always try and go where I can be helpful, I think it's fascinating to actually change perspective every now and then. You've changed perspective. People who want to know, I certainly want to know, is when, what that perspective is now that you've gone over to the regulatory side of things. Um, when you're going to work in the morning, do you have an agenda, I know you have somebody who sets your diary, but do you have an agenda that you know you're pursuing or do things cascade and you have to say, oh, that's more important than this and technology-wise or regulatory-wise? Well, of course, there are priorities. And uh, one of the things that has surprised me in the five weeks or so I've been in Ofcom is it, very intense. So the agenda or the calendar is pretty full. Um, which is perhaps uh, not how people see things in the kind of uh, public sphere necessarily, but that's the way it is. So it's very intense, very interesting. There's always too much on the plate than you can actually um, handle. So you've got to prioritize uh, according to importance. Uh, what's really fascinating though is that pretty much everything is so interesting and it's got, it's so, you, know, you can get so involved that it's really hard to prioritize. So actually, I'm very excited when I go to work in the morning, knowing also I've got a great team and I've got a great, great uh, structure and uh, the whole management there have been very open. Uh, it's quite an exciting place to be. Good. Well, congratulations on being there. Let's move on to talk about the meat of, of this interview, which is 5G and Wi-Fi. We're here at this Wireless Global Congress. Um, is Wi-Fi still important in an era of 5G? Yes, Wi-Fi is still very important today. It will be tomorrow, and uh, you know, in Ofcom and you know, me personally as well, we fully recognise uh, Wi-Fi as a very important part of current and future networks, and recognise the values given to people. So I think uh, it's important to recognise that. Also, Ofcom as a whole recognises that because all the licences we give, or the unlicences in unlicensed spectrum, as we call them, uh, <laughs> are are technology neutral in you know in, in the vast majority of cases. So effectively, that's recognizing that Wi-Fi and other technologies have got a huge role to play. You're looking at it from, obviously, the regulatory viewpoint, which is what you have to do. What about the industry? Are their perspectives aligned or are they widely divergent? Well, I think, depending on who you ask, you will get alignment and you might also get huge divergence as well. <laughs> and that's quite, you know, that's the whole thing about having a competitive environment where people are vying for, in some cases, the same price. Uh, in other cases, they see the benefit of collaboration and cooperation, and that's you know the, the Wireless Broadband Alliance is part of that cooperation atmosphere. We have operators who have you know big plays in the mobile field, but also wireless. So I think the big debate uh, as we go ahead, as 5G becomes a commercial reality, and you've got the Wi-Fi 6, as the Wi-Fi dot AX is uh, version is currently known, are coming out roughly the same time. I think it's going to be interesting to see how they position themselves for the future take-up of, uh, of uh, devices over the next few years, to what extent they uh, collaborate in a coordinated uh, interaction, uh, to what degree they converge in terms of technical capabilities, and to what degree they compete. 5G has its challenges, as we know, and so does, uh, so does Wi-Fi. How, what role can the regulator play in ensuring that those challenges are met so to get to the next stage of technological development and the deployment in due course of proper 5G uh, systems and services. Is, is 5G a standalone overarching technology or is it a framework for other technologies as well? Yeah, so two, two very precise questions there. First of all, the regulator, my personal view is that the regulator can um, help in many ways, the whole industry, you know, Wi-Fi, 5G, or anyone else who wants to improve uh, the connectivity and the quality of communications, the security of, of, of communications, and bring more innovation to the UK. That's our goal in a fair and transparent and open way, so without any, any preference for, for anyone. Um, so we have many levers. 
The one that's obviously on everybody's mind all the time is the spectrum, which is very important. Um, and so obviously we are working very hard to make sure that we get out the spectrum that people need as quickly as possible. The good news is there's never been so much spectrum available today. The, the, the downside is there's never been so much demand. So we're not sitting back. We are actively working on where we see the priorities at the moment. It's the uh, 700 meg and the 3.6 to 3.8 in the uh, 5G world. But we've also recently issued some more spectrum in the 5 gig for unlicensed. We're also working on the 60 gig band to offer more spectrum there. You know, a total of 14 gigahertz, I think, which will be available. So I think, you know, I think our spectrum team, you know, led by my colleagues, are doing a great job on that. We could always do more, so we're always listening to what else is needed. From what we've understood, those are the kind of priorities today for the, for the industry. But we're also working on supporting trials uh, wherever that's needed to bring forward new business cases. Because I think uh, in the UK in particular, it's a very business-focused environment in the sense that, you know, there's no point in us trying to be first just to be, um, have bigger networks than the Chinese or the, or the Japanese or the Americans or be faster to commercial launch than the Koreans. That's not what being first in the UK means. What it means in the UK is that it works for everybody and there's benefit for everybody. And that's why we're taking the time this year to build a lot of trials where we can actually focus on the business benefits. And we can help with giving test li licenses. We can also help in clarifying the, the, any impacts around net neutrality, around network slicing, for example. Um, and we also help by also making sure that there's a security framework around the technology that is, that is built in from the beginning. Because none of the business models that we're hearing about, which are underpinned by connectivity, transforming all infrastructure, uh, are going to happen if we're not totally um, convinced that they are secure and managed. And uh, that's a big element of the work we do as well. So as you can see, a range uh, of things. And to your second question about 5G, well, this is, this is a key debate because there are still some proponents of 5G who would perhaps just focus on the, the uh, specific aspects of the new radio or the new core. However, majority of people today see 5G as a framework which, yes, is an evolution of 4G in terms of radio, core, performance, capability, bigger, faster, more capacity. But also the revolutionary side of 5G is that wider vision of using the 5G as a framework to englobe and integrate all access technologies. And that's where the Wi-Fi comes in, because it can be one of the technologies that are integrated in a framework, an end-to-end -end framework, which includes all access technologies, licensed, unlicensed, or shared licensed but also techniques such as AI and machine learning, automation, all of that into a single orchestrated platform. And around that is the framework where you have a security built in right from the outset. And I think that's a very compelling vision of an end-to-end -end framework for 5G, which englobes everything. The challenge for Wi-Fi is that, for me, it's not that clear that there is an equivalent vision of Wi-Fi beyond the immediate aspects of Wi-Fi coverage and connectivity. Uh, it doesn't have an end-to-end -end development plan from, from what I can see, and it doesn't have that framework to show that it could englobe other technologies. So the risk of Wi-Fi that it becomes just a piece in the jigsaw of the wider framework rather than having its own framework. And that's just one of the challenges I put forward today here at the conference. Interesting, because we hear a lot over the past months, obviously, I hear uh, this uh, events such as this, you know, people saying Wi-Fi is always going to be massively important. The other the countervailing view is that no it's on its way out if whether it's two years ten years or whatever you know wi-fi it will exist in some form but not in the way we understand it at the moment uh, and when you read about wi-fi 6 at least it means something to people because people understand what wi-fi is they know what 5g is now they what 4g they know what 6 is but when you come at 802.11 ax and all the rest of it, people have got they just blank out they've got no idea do you think from your point of view in the regulatory environment, that Wi-Fi is developable in the way that you were just talking about 5G in the framework. It is, and uh, you know, I've I've seen the demos today of the Wi-Fi 6, uh, as it's now known, uh, <laughs> demos, and it's very impressive and it's a great technology. Yeah. But again, going back to 5G, two things here really: the uh, the bigger, faster, better cap capacity race between Wi-Fi and 5G is one thing where I think you know, the, the Wi-Fi has done very well. On the other hand, there's been a pivot from the cellular industry where the revolutionary part of building that framework vision 
has become a key part of 5G. And also, they've stretched the network capabilities to areas that were totally different, such as ultra-reliability, low latency, addressing use cases that were impossible. And I think on that pivot has probably caught the Wi-Fi industry slightly off guard, where they're, they're going to take some time to catch up on that level. And that's where they, I think they need to put some focus, because while Wi-Fi 6 does go to some degree to allow network slicing and you know greater capacity, etc., there's still a bit of distance there. And that's where it's going to be a challenge. The other thing is the development cycles uh, of uh, cellular networks have really accelerated. And I mentioned today at the conference that today, uh, six years ago, I was fast asleep, having spent, <laughs> having spent the whole night putting sites on air for the launch of the UK's first 4G network. And um, that was six years ago today. Time flies. Time it? flies. And uh, pretty much we can say, according to public statements, we should have the first uh, 5G commercial networks in the UK one year from now. So that's a really good benchmark. Now, UK wasn't the first country to launch 4G, but if you look at a large uh, nation such as the UK as a benchmark, exactly seven years between the launch, the first launch of 4G and the first launch of 5G, that's a good benchmark. And that's seven years is hugely impressive because any other technology up till now, you were looking at at the minimum 10 years to 12 years. So that's a significant acceleration. Whereas Wi-Fi was traditionally known to be very fast in development, are much more focused perhaps because that limited uh, scope as we were saying you know relative to the end to end but now it seems to be that it's slowing down a little bit or is not as fast as it used to be and i think if the cellular industry accelerates and expands the scope and the wi-fi stays with the same scope but doesn't go as fast then i think there's going to be challenges for the wi-fi industry to keep building that framework and stay relevant a really fascinating analysis from a man who knows what he's talking about mansur okay. hanif thank you very much thank you